welcome to Homestead Corner. Today, we're gonna to do some grid down cooking with candles. Part of our preparedness is making sure that we have the skills to do the things that we plan to do. So when the grid is down, we need to figure out how we are going to cook safely. A lot of people, in, especially in condensed areas and cities and things like that, are not going to be able to cook outside safely in a long-term situation. They may have to cook inside for quite some time. And making sure you have a safe way to do that is so, so important. So one of the ways that we cook inside with no electricity when the grid is down is with candles. Candles are really super simple and easy to cook with and you don't have to have lots of skill and you don't need any kind of special equipment. I'm just gonna use things that I already have in the house that we use every day for other situations and different things, but we're gonna make them work to cook with some candles. So let's jump in. I'll show you what we're gonna use and how we're gonna do this and we'll cook something up. So I like to make my emergency preparedness plans as simple as possible. And I haven't done this for a really long time, but it's kind of like riding a bike. You know, once you get back on, it's the same thing. And uh, so I'm just going to use a dish and I make sure it's got a good lip on it. So it's going to give me some height enough so I can put my candles on the dish. And this is just so I have a heat safe surface, nothing fancy, and it's just a regular old dinner plate. Um, because that's going to handle the heat from the candle. And then I've got this rack from a pan. It's got little feet on it, but we're not really going to use those today because we are going to have plenty of room underneath because of the candles that we're going to use. I'm just going to use some of these Dollar Tree um, tea lights. They're really cheap. You get 20 of them for $1.25. And uh, we're going to use some of those. Just a spatula. I'm sure you own one of those and some sort of pan and uh, this is just from a mess kit it's real thin so it's going to heat up quicker than let's say cast iron or a really thick bottom pan so you'll be able to cook for less time is what i'm always thinking how i want to conserve that fuel because if i'm reliant on candles to cook my food i only have so many in my stash and eventually they're going to run out so i want to make sure that um, I can cook with something pr fairly thin with candles. You can use the um, other pans, like cast iron is great for this as well, but it does take a lot longer to heat up and get through there. And you're going to need some sort of fire, a lighter, matches. You should have a big stash of matches. I think everybody should. And today I'm just going to cook an egg from one of my hands. So nothing fancy. But uh, this is really super simple and easy to do. I'm just going to take my candles and we're going to need more than one candle for this. You don't want just one candle isn't going to heat your pan up enough to cook something. So you're going to want a few candles. I like to just put like one in the center and put a few around. So we have like six candles here. That's going to be more than enough for anything that we're going to cook. And these candles last a few hours, which is great. So if you've got something that takes a little bit of time, these are still going to work. And if you want more heat, add more candles. If you've got a bigger pan, you can put another ring of candles around here for a real big pan. I would definitely add more candles for the bigger pan that you have. So something small, just a few candles. I've got six there and we're just going to light these up. And get cooking this does not have to be difficult and we just light these candles until they are all wet up and get them inside ones so you don't burn your fingers okay once we have all our candles lit up I'm just gonna take my rack and I'm gonna put it over the top and you want to make sure there is airspace between the candle and the rack because you need air in there for your flame to keep it going. Okay, so once I have all my candles lit, I'm just going to grab my pan. And again, this is just one of those cheap mess pans from a mess kit. 
and it's thin and lightweight and we don't have to worry about that. It's going to work. You can use these on a campfire, definitely. I have done that plenty of times before, but you know, works on candles too. So this heats up really fast. You can see this butter is already melting and sizzling. So we're just going to get that butter melted, just like any time you cook an egg, you don't want it to stick any more than it has to. And this can definitely stick though, so because you're cooking it pretty hot, pretty fast. So I'm just gonna throw my egg in here and get that baby cooking. My egg was in the refrigerator, so it's cold. Definitely cool everything down. And I definitely like the yolk broken. So you can see this is already starting to cook. Some of the whites are turning white and the yolk is spreading out a little bit. And you can see the hotter spots where the candles flames are. Um, you're gonna get that with candles. That's just the way it's going to be. A cast iron pan is going to heat a little bit more evenly, but you're still gonna get hot spots. And I'm not really gonna try to keep this as a fried egg but um, we'll just scramble it kind of together, I guess, because there some spots are not cooking quite the same. And that's okay. If you are cooking soup or anything like that, you just wanna make sure you're stirring it. It's gonna work perfectly. And we really, I think this is probably one of the safest ways to cook um, off grid because the candles are contained they are underneath our pan in a bowl, in a plate. If anything leaks, it's going to be in the plate, not all over the house. Um, it's really, it's not giving off all kinds of horrible toxic fumes like some other options that you might try in the house. So this is really one of my favorite ways to cook inside. If you don't have a wood stove, um, this would definitely be my second option. And you put enough candles on there, you can fry potatoes, you can cook steak, whatever it is you want to cook. Just to flip this bad boy over. You can see where the hot spots are. It cooks a little bit more there. That's okay, you just wanna stay on top of your food. You're not really gonna walk off on this anyway because it's definitely, you don't wanna leave candles unattended. Our egg is just cooking away nicely. We just wanna make sure this is all done and to the amount that you like. So you can see this does get super hot with these candles. And the more heat you need, the more candles you're going to use. It's really that simple. And you can just adjust it to your pan depending on what you're cooking. So you've got a safe, easy heat to cook indoors. This is really super simple and easy. And we want to make these emergency situations as easy as possible. Um, when you practice this kind of stuff, you will be second, it'll be second nature and you don't have to worry about it at all. <clears throat> that looks like it's about done. So we can pull that egg off there. And she's fabulous, look at that. So nice. We're gonna pull that pan off and put our candles out. So really, we wanna sit down and think about how we're going to accomplish those things that we need during grid down situations. And I just added a little bit of salt and pepper to this. You can add whatever you like or whatever you have, definitely. You can add your seasoning while you're cooking, but eggs, I just throw it right on top because it's simple and easy. Mmm, mm-mm. -mm. We all want to make sure we have our plans for grid down situations because with the energy the way that it is, we need to be prepared for more blackouts and things like that. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye.